Uh, yeah, again, um, just looking at the motivation of the whole group and the energy levels of the whole group. Um, we've made a couple of changes this week. Um, Scotty Sierra coming back in for his first start this year. Um, he's worked his way back into the team. I think he's uh, trained exceptionally hard through his rehab process and uh, um, thought he played well against the Highlanders. So, yeah, he gets a start. Um, I guess you've got um, Banksy here who makes his uh, first start for the Brumbies, first game for the Brumbies, and uh, looking forward to that. I think there's, there's really tight competition in the outside backs at the moment. Um, Henry Spate's in really good form, and Dargs and Nigel have both played some good games for us, but uh, it was time to give <coughs> Banksy a bit of a crack this week. Uh, so we're all looking forward to that. Uh, and then Jared Butler comes into the team for the first time off the bench. Um, so again, he's gone through a long rehab process, and. Uh, Played well at club level um, and has earned his spot in this team. And then I guess the final one is just the, um, the decision not to play Carts, who's uh, carried a, a bit of a rib injury over the last couple of games. Um, and we just wanted to give him an extended break so that we weren't in the same cycle of uh, re-injuring it during training and allowing him to get out there and play his best football. So that gives uh, Scott Fardy his first captaincy for the year. Is it always a bit tougher making that decision to rest a captain, especially when uh, yeah, I think um, we've got a leadership group that have been working together now um, for a long time, and uh, you know, Fards and Carts have a really good relationship, and they're both uh, um, leading very well on the field. Um, I think Carts has uh, done an exceptional job, particularly at the back end of the games, in terms of uh, controlling the composure and the execution uh, of the players. Um, that's the challenge for Fards now. So Karts came off in the last game in that last period of time and Fards took over. And uh, uh, his challenge will be making sure that uh, he maintains good, good composure throughout the game, but particularly at the back end of the game. Was this a lesson as well in the match against the Highlanders? Obviously a disappointing result, but what do you take the game the Reds out of that? Uh, yeah, disappointing result, but I thought we, we outplayed them. Um, but it doesn't count for much when um, they take away the points. So. Yeah, I think defensively we were pretty good. We made a couple of uh, individual errors that probably cost us in the game. And if you look at that, um, in terms of the sustained pressure that we put on yet didn't get the result, um, we've had a bit of a focus on um, our attack game, making sure that we are um, executing a little bit better, um, chasing the breakdown a little bit better, and hopefully that comes out this weekend. Have you had to think very carefully uh, about going up against Stephen Moore, who might have a bit of an inside scoop on what to expect? Yeah, I think uh, any time you come up against Australian sides, I think they've got a pretty good understanding of how the, the other Australian sides play. So um, no different here with um, you know, George Smith. He's been out of our system for a while, but certainly with uh, Steve, he's uh, you know, pretty fresh to this program and he knows exactly how we're playing. So we've tweaked a few things this week just to see if uh, it'll throw him out of it. Bit of a week, you know, Bruce to, to sign on a little bit longer with the team. Yeah, very good. Um, he's been uh, tremendous within the team. I think he, he adds great energy around the training paddock, around the um, around the place in general. And then when he comes on the field, I think he's uh, he's showing really good composure, but at the same time adding good energy. So um, yeah, he's he's fit into the group really well. And uh, it was a pretty easy decision. Tomas uh, will most likely come back through that June period, um, maybe through club rugby, um, and then should be right for the last two games. So at this stage. Um, yeah, Devet is, is filling a great, uh, you know, filling a hole for us at the moment and doing a great job. Steve, were, were you right to uh, tinker with the side given it's a local derby? You, you know, given the importance of these games against, you know, rival Australian teams, did you think, well, obviously our counter guys against Bob Simmons and Douglas? Uh, yeah, I think we've been, you know, we've been posing this question to ourselves since the start of the competition in terms of how we're going to rotate the squad because the last couple of seasons we really haven't maintained uh, the motivation within the group uh, and we haven't given guys enough rest throughout the year so they're nice and fresh when they are on the field. So uh, we've been making that decision every week with our rotation policy and it's no different this week. Um, you've got to be very careful with who you rotate and when you rotate um, and in what position they're playing. So we took all that into consideration and uh, yeah, it's always a difficult um, decision to rotate guys out of the team because most of the guys want to play every week but for the overall health of the squad and um, you know, looking longer term for the season we think that this is the best way going forward. Still Stephen Moore, you're saying that you 
when you've changed line out calls, etc., given that he was sat here for so long and, and such an important part of the Brumbies, did you? Is that the sort of thing that you needed to change um, for this game against Queensland? Um, no, 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 no. Just some of our plays. So um, some of our calling and some of our plays. Yeah, no, no, no. The, um, the line-outs, if he's listening and watching this, the line-outs will be the same as last year, so he can pick those off nice and easily. But, but are you expecting... So you've changed this up so that he, he's... You know, it's going to affect... You know, he won't be able to um, interpret too much about what's going on. Yeah, I think he's, um, he's, a, he's a type of guy that really concentrates uh, on his team. You know, we had him here for a number of years, and... Uh, um, whilst there are opposition calls that you you want to understand before you go into a game, realistically, you've got enough to worry about anyway. So he's not one of those guys who will be desperate to know what our calls are and try and stuff them up. Turn on, turn on the rotation. Um, like it's been such a dreaded word in Australian sport, really, over the years. But yep. do you think the attitude towards it is changing? Oh, uh, well, I mean, it's, it's, um, it's always tough. Um, I, I can certainly understand how... Um, people have been upset in the past with it, um, certainly players. I think um, you know it is a fine line between rotating guys out but keeping the mo motivation, not only in the guys that uh, get the opportunity, obviously, or the guys who've been missing out and then finally get the opportunity, but to keep the motivation up for those guys who miss another opportunity to play. Um, um, it's difficult, but we feel that this year is, um, has been better than last year, so we, we want to maintain it because it has been uh, working in terms of... Um, uh, I think the combination on the field hasn't suffered too much at this stage, um, in fact, at all. I think the guys who've come into the squad and taken their opportunity have done a fantastic job, and uh, whilst that continues, we'll continue to do it. What about the Reds? Um, they're, they're a pretty dangerous side and look to be playing attack and rugby as well, but they haven't got the results. Styles has given them a, a bit of a rocket this week and, and next a few players you expect them to come out pretty fired up. Uh, yeah, I think it's the same with any local derby and, and uh, irrespective of where a team sits on the ladder or how they've gone previously, every game's a new game and uh, it'll be no different this week. You know, we've been in the same position. We, um, you know, we lose two games in a row. That doesn't mean we're on a, a landslide. That means we're going to be nice and focused for the next one. If we win a game, we're going to be nice and focused for the next one. So it's no different for these guys. They've been pushing every week, making sure their focus is right. And Yeah, I expect that um, um, you know, they'll put in a... Fantastic performance again. John, uh, how are you feeling? <coughs> um, yeah, really excited actually. So we've come up, uh, we've had a really good week of training. I think um, the energy's really lifted so far. And I'm just excited to get out and play the first game for the Brums, which has uh, been the goal of all through the pre-season and sort of everything leading up to this so far. Have you watching games um, quite closely to see what um, Of the Reds? Yeah, yeah. Well, I know they're going pretty well, so... Um, yeah, I've been watching a fair bit of it, and I know how they like to play and what they sort of do, and sort of just watching a bit of footage this week, so yeah, just ready to get out there. So a few nerves though? Um, I suppose there's always a few nerves when you play, but um, I suppose if you know your role and what you're supposed to do, and we've got really good structures here, so just work hard with the team and I think we'll get a good result. Obviously running out the field must be a, a goal for you, for you this season, a personal goal. Have you got any other personal goals this season? Um, I think, uh, ahead of that, I just want to sort of establish, establish myself here at the Brahmies and just play as many, many games as I can. So it's just work hard and then hopefully um, the team results will come and then the individual ones will come after that. Tom, do you, do you, play, for, um, you play for Queensland country? Did you, did you play for the Reds at all when you were part of the... Yeah, so yeah, so I, yeah, I played at two caps for the Reds. Yeah, so I mean, how does it feel to be playing against you? Um, I suppose uh, it's mixed feelings, but um, I know a few of the boys up there, but um, as I said, coming off a really good pre-season here, just, um, it'd be good to just go out in there and just test everything we've learned, and I'm just really excited to, get, um, to go out. Yeah. You don't feel as though you've got a point to prove? Or anything like that? No, 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 not at all. I think um, I'd, no hard feelings or anything up there, so um, just expect a, um, a strong showing from all the boys and just learn from everything I've been taught and all the players here. Do you feel as though you've got to play now? Um, uh, yeah, in, I guess you'd say that actually. A lot of the stuff I've learnt through Bernie and uh, the other coaches here um, have really stuck with me and I think improved my game immensely. Basically, this is the reason. Say that, Danny. Yeah. 
<laughs> this is a reason you kind of came to Canberra. It wasn't for an opportunity. I think you had the, the two games in two years. Yeah. This is your chance to, um, I guess, take the next step in your career. Is that the way you see it? Yeah, exactly. Well, um, playing the one game each year, I suppose you'd, you, when, once you sort of play Super Rugby, you really want to play more. And that was the overall goal that I really wanted to achieve. So hopefully going forward, I can look to play, look to establish myself as a, a Super Rugby player in week in, week out, I guess. Because did you come down here, um, like you got a spot on the wing this week. Yeah. But as a full back, you came down? Uh, yeah, oh, more outside back, but um, full back wing. Uh, I sort of... I'll play wherever sort of the team will need me to play, and I'm happy to do that. So if that's on the wing or at fullback or wherever, I'm happy to do that. What are you expecting from the Reds' back line? Because I saw last week they're willing to throw it around, and yeah. they've got some um, big outside backs that are willing yeah. to run it. Well, I think they're, um, as we've, sh- we've seen some footage, like their attack's pretty dangerous, so they'll have to be on our toes, and we can't give them sort of easy, easy go forward because I think they'll take that and run with it. So if we can shut them down and then look to play look to play off our ball and then I think it will go really well. You've only mentioned the rotation policy. I guess you're a guy who benefits from it. Is it working in that way that the motivation is there for you guys even if you're not in there? Yeah, well, I think something um, I've learned down here is the culture is uh, the culture is unbelievable down here and all the boys are really close. So I think um, the rotation policy works well with um, everyone's really happy for someone who comes in and no hard feelings for whoever goes out. So I think um, it works out really well. Mentally, though, is it a fine line between you know um, wanting to go in there and do as much as you can to, to try and stay in there next week and then also just making sure you do the little things right that might not get noticed sort of thing? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I suppose that just comes into playing your own game and uh, I suppose not trying too much, but uh, you've, got to, you've got to take your chance when you're given it, so uh, hopefully I can achieve that.